Greetings everyone. This is an earthquake watch for January 14, 15 and 16. A 6.5 earthquake was recorded yesterday in Benin Islands, Japan. It appears that during this watch period we may receive two similar sized earthquakes. The main reason for this is the solar winds are still remaining at significant levels. They are around 500 kilometers per second and they've been fairly high since January 6th so this is a, a considerable amount of time the solar winds are at these levels. The GOES X-ray flux monitor is now starting to show some significant activity and these are fairly significant movements and I feel that January 15 represents a significant danger for a large earthquake. Ok we'll have a quick look at the solar monitor 174 angstrom and what we're looking at here is a timeline now there is a coronal hole where I'm just marking right now. This coronal hole represents the Macquarie Islands earthquake and that was a 5.3 event recorded yesterday. And approximately 8 hours later we did receive the Benin Islands event and we'll just scroll up here. The Benin Islands earthquake occurred here and although this is slightly earlier than expected it probably occurred half a day prematurely from my um, work and observations. It gives us a good guide of what's coming up so that usually means that whatever's on this side is pretty much done and we need to concentrate ahead in time so there are some significant coronal holes that are now um, approaching if we use those two earthquakes as a template okay we'll have a look at the moving imagery from SDO and this is the Macquarie Islands coronal hole and it's important to note that now we're moving into this fairly large coronal hole and it is changing shape quite drastically and there are some areas in this coronal hole um, that's moving and above also and this represents um, a potential wide region that could be at risk now these size coronal holes generally don't produce large earthquakes um, but what, from what I'm looking at here there appears to be one or two events in this um, area and what's most important about this is we get a good timeline from the initial earthquake so it does appear that January 14 and 15 it seems that New Zealand may be at risk. Okay we're going into Google Earth now and I'm plotting an area 35 to 37 degrees south latitude and the best fit area would be North Island New Zealand as it this um, fits quite well. Now we have had some recent earthquakes in this area and there is a potential that perhaps um, a 6.5 to 6.7 earthquake uh, will be recorded and there's also been some volcanic activities the last month or so and it is worth noting that um, weather or not um, did mention some significant activities um, and I'm just a little bit concerned about the coronal hole matching this area my second area that fits well is the West Chile rise and this is just offshore of Chile and there are some areas here that do fit quite well and this probably would be the best case scenario for an earthquake of this magnitude. The third area is Bio Bio in Chile. Now this area is conducive to some very large earthquakes uh, most notably the 8.8 .8 that was recorded last March uh, late February and it does appear that this region um, does extend and it does seem to fit a little bit better than the New Zealand region I just feel that this would be not quite as matched but um, there is a high potential that the uh, 6.5 to 6.7 earthquake that I feel could be coming will be in this region and my last area would be the southern mid-Atlantic ridge now I've been plotting this area for the last month or two and there is a very dangerous little active region or a fault line that could come into play so I would be keeping my eye on this um, the Atlantic is uh, very vulnerable right now and I feel that there is some significant movements um, in the oceans especially in the center portions of okay we're looking at Solon info and I'll leave the um, information in the description box for anyone interested but this is a very good tool for charting uh, coronal holes and the Macquarie Island coronal hole sits here and the Benin Islands is straight above and slightly forward 
So it just, just gives us a closer indication of the size of coronal holes and the magnitude of earthquakes. Now this very large um, coronal hole that was uh, preceding the Benin Islands event didn't really give much in terms of strong earthquakes. And I feel that perhaps um, this may be of the, the same. However, there is a, a risk that the top portion of this um, would be um, perhaps separate as was the um, Macquarie Islands earthquake. Okay, we're back in the solar monitor and there are some regions fairly deep down towards Antarctica that may be of influence during this watch period. I'm a little bit concerned about some of these holes that, are d that do stretch down and we may get some earthquakes fairly deep down closer to the Antarctica region uh, perhaps about 5.5 in magnitude that we need to keep a close eye on. The next area of watch for this um, earthquake uh, video would be a um, significant hole above and that sits at about 37 degrees north latitude. The main area of concern for the second coronal hole that I'm targeting would be the Japan region and Honshu. Now I'm expecting one or two 6.5 earthquakes in this watch and I do feel that the northern hemisphere event could be in this region. Now we did get an earthquake just on the corner here in the Yellow Sea, um, a 5.0 and that could be a foreshock or something larger in and around this latitude. So I do feel that there is a, a strong potential of an earthquake in this region. The second region will be in the central California region. Now we did receive some rumblings at around about 4.5 in magnitude over the last few days and this could also be considered as foreshocks of a larger event. So there is a potential that we may receive um, a larger event um, along this area. The third area of concern would be the New Madrid fault line as it does sit um, in around the danger area of 35 to 37 degrees. So there may be a, a larger than normal earthquake in Arkansas during this watch period. Along this parallel we do have the Azores region and it has been a little bit active the last three months. We have had some sporadic events in this area. I do feel that there is a potential that we may receive something in this region. It's also worth noting that Mount Etna has showed some signs of life the last few days and this does fit in the right danger zone of 35 to 37 degrees. So there may be a further activation of this uh, most dangerous volcano and, and that does sit in the in the danger zone as I said and that'll be the main areas of concern and we do move into the areas in Europe. And the last area of watch would be in China and there are some areas uh, that do fit in this and the southern Qinghai China and also western Zhejiang is also in this target line. So that will be my earthquake watch for today. Uh, the results will be annotated at the end of the video and also in certain segments. Thanks for watching.